I lied. I had. I do have one more thing to share. <clears throat> Pardon me. I apologize for the sore throat and the hacking and the funny sound. I did a What's in My Bag video the other day, and one of my pin friends commented and said, What about fountain pens? So I'm going to do really quickly what I carry when I do carry fountain pens. I don't carry them out very often because I don't find that I use them when I'm out very often. If I'm using them in my file effects, the only one I ever carry to use in my file effects is the reform. Now, I don't generally carry it because, well, it's ugly. It doesn't fit in my file effects. Or, I mean, it doesn't match my file effects, which probably is crazy, but bugs me nonetheless. And then, like I said in my file effects video, um, to open a fountain pen, you've got to do the twisty bit to get this cap off. Now, it's not rocket science to do the twisty bit to get the cap off, but when I'm writing something in my file effects, often I need to do it quickly, and I grab those zebra Z-clips, and I like the clicky. So, and those are working really well. So I don't generally mess with that. So this is generally what I carry on an everyday basis. I don't often write in my file effects with a fountain pen. However, I do sometimes carry journals. Until real recently, I carried this ratty, nasty Piccadilly that fell apart, and I loved anyway. Um, the paper is 80 gram weight, I believe. Lines, the lines are pretty small, but it was pretty good paper. It was not hideous at all. There was some show through, there was no bleed through. So until recently, I carried this really often because when I used different planners, this was sort of the landing pad for the things that I thought about during the day, things I wanted to do, um, um, just different random thoughts during the day, and I kept it in this. Um, and often when I carry a notebook around, this one is full, so I'm done with that. Um, probably won't purchase another Piccadilly because the cover fell off. I liked it. It's just that the cover fell apart, and you can't... Um, that makes archiving sort of pointless. Right now I'm carrying the Rhodia Dot Webby, which, to be honest with you, this is really sad. I won this notebook, and I really I liked it when I first got it. Um, I'm not liking the Rhodia writing. The paper's fantastic, don't get me wrong. It doesn't ever... I've had it bleed through like maybe once or twice, and that was a, with a Noodler's Flex pen. And if you're a pen person and you have a Noodler's Flex... You and I both know what that means is that the flex pin lays down lots of ink, a very wet line if you're flexing that, and um, I'm not surprised that it bled through. But that doesn't happen very often. Very fountain pen friendly. Number one, the color of the pages is absolutely hideous. You can't tell in this video, but it's not... You, you can a little bit in the... Do you see that, sh that color in the seam there? That's about what color the pages are. It's like an apricot color. It's not even ivory. I don't mind ivory pages. Let me show you the difference between that and a Piccadilly, and then I'll get on to pins. I promise I'll make my point. But let me just show you a blank page here at the end so that you can see what I'm talking about. I know people think I'm crazy when I say this. <laughs> there. Do you see that? This, this is ivory paper. This is off-white paper. This is apricot paper. I'm sorry, Rhodia, it's apricot. I don't like this notebook. I have not written in it like I did the Piccadilly. I will probably purchase something new soon. But, for right now, whatever. What I did with it, and what I really like it for, actually, it was pen trials. This is what I did with it in the very beginning. Or, I mean, ink trials. So when I would get samples, then I would try them in here. And I like that, except that if you're using, say, a blue-toned ink, it's going to look funny on this apricot paper. The true color is not going to show through. So I generally use a Rhodia dot pad, and they're white. Anyway, my point being... When I do carry a notebook to do journaling in or what have you, I do sometimes carry a fountain pen. And I'm picky about what I carry with me. I carry the Reform a lot um, because it's very durable, very easy to carry around, has a fine nib, and it lays down a... It, I mean, it's a very, very smooth nib. And it was a cheap pen. If something happens to it, I'm not going to be devastated. I would be sad because I really like it, but I would not be devastated. Um, I do not carry my Schaefer... Preludes with me. They're heavy. They're easy to drop. The first day I got the first one, I dropped it on the floor. I was just heartbroken. Wrecked the nib, naturally. Um, I do sometimes carry the Lamy. And I say it Lamy, get past it. Um, Safari. I have it in charcoal. The one with the black nib. It's just the medium black nib. I do sometimes carry the Lamy. This is not my favorite pen. Um, because I'm not a big fan of the Lamy grip. I do like these pens. They're easy to use. They're ubiquitous. They're very, very durable. Um... I'm just not a super big fan of the grip. That being said, they do come in some really great colors. Um, it's a smooth nib for being a steel nib. 
the nibs are easily interchangeable. Um, nothing wrong with it, it's just not my favorite thing. And this clip is really spectacular, it really is useful. It's kind of hideously ugly, but it really does grip well. So if you're taking this out, um, it is going to hang onto your notebook or whatever. And I do like the fact that it has a pop-off cap, so you don't have to unscrew the lady cap. Um, I often carry Platinum Preppies, which I think for the money is one of the best fountain pens on the bloody planet. Platinum Preppies are cheap. They're like $4. They come with a cartridge in them, um, which I promptly throw out because they are eyedropper fills. Um, for those of you who don't know, what that means is that you put a black O-ring right there. You can see right here, right there. You put a black O-ring and some silicone, silicone grease and you have that entire barrel full of ink. The nibs are fabulous. They're smooth. They come in a medium and a fine. Um, they are breakable if you drop them hard enough. The caps are very easily breakable. I would presume that the body is if you drop it hard enough. So these are not what you really want to take out and throw around on concrete. It's, it's, it is breakable. You can break that, and I just can't imagine all that ink shooting all over the place. Um, there's one in a medium, one in a fine. Um, and I keep colors in them. Like, this is Bad Belted Kingfisher, Noodler's Bad Belted, and that's all that I keep in it. This is Aurora Black, and this is all that I keep in this. So, they're really nice. They're really inexpensive. If you lose it, if you break it, you're not going to be heartbroken. I do carry those sometimes, although they make me a little bit nervous if I'm carrying a leather bag because it's an eyedropper, and if that sucker goes bad or it starts to leak, you're just, you're going to ruin your bag. Um, so, they make me a little nervous, but I do carry them. I've never had a problem, I have to say. That being said, I've never had one leak, never had a problem with a preppy. Um, one of my favorites to carry around is the Caveco Sport. Again, another twist cap. Very short pin in comparison. There's the Platinum Preppy, there's the Caveco Sport. They're made to be that way. They do sell clips also that go on there. I prefer pins without clips if I can get them. Twists off, you post the cap, and it's a long enough pin to actually write with. Um, fantastic nib. This is a $21 to $25 pin, depending on where you purchase it. The nib is fantastically smooth for that price. Obviously, that's gold plating, not a gold nib, and the hideous color of it indicates that it's gold plating as well. These come with a short, very, very short cartridge. They're proprietary, which means you can only use the Caveco cartridges. I detest cartridge fill pins, um, so I have this as an eyedropper fill as well. This one does not require the O-ring. You just put the silicone grease because the threads are finer. I know people have had problems using these as an eyedropper, and they've had them leak right here where the nib goes, nib and feed go into the pen. I have not had a problem. I love this pen. For the price of it, this is one of my favorites. I like this pen far better than I like the Lamy. Far better, and I would purchase, I would definitely purchase more. Those are the ones I carry, the point being to this whole video, I'm sorry, I ramble, is that those are the ones that I carry around when I do carry fountain pens. I don't always. Fountain pens, usually for me, are something that I keep at home, that I use in leisure time, that I'm either writing letters or journaling in the evenings with. So they're not something that I just use on an everyday, write on everything basis. Um, no, they're just not. So anyway, that's the addendum to the, to the what's in my bag. That's the only other thing to add is that sometimes I drop one of the journals in. Not, I, not as often, certainly with the Rhodia. I really, honestly, used to carry the Piccadilly every day, and I probably would, again, if I could find a notebook that I really love. If you have any notebook suggestions, leave me a comment. Thank you so much for watching. See you soon.